In the previous lecture, we had discussion on three properties of Laplace transform and the properties were convolution in time, multiplication in time and differentiation in time. Now in this lecture, we will understand the tenth property, integration in time. And to understand this property, let's take one time domain signal ft and let's say it's Laplace transform is equal to fs and the region of convergence is equal to r. And as we are discussing integration in time property, we will integrate the time domain signal ft. And let's say we are integrating the time domain signal ft from minus infinity to an instant of time t. And to differentiate between the variable t and this instant, we will replace t by a dummy variable tau. So in this way, we will have a time domain signal f tau and we will integrate it from minus infinity to t with respect to tau. Now in this scenario, we need to find out the Laplace transform. And I will first give you the property and then we will prove it. After performing the integration, we will have an all new signal. And let's say this new signal is f t dash. And for this new signal, we will have a new Laplace transform. And the new Laplace transform will be equal to the old Laplace transform fs over variable s. So this is the Laplace transform we will have after performing the integration and the region of convergence is at least R intersection real part of S greater than zero. And to understand how we have obtained the region of convergence at least R intersection real part of S greater than zero, we will prove this property. However, the proof is similar to the proof we had in the Fourier transform chapter. But to understand the region of convergence, we will prove it. And if you remember in the last lecture, I told you the bilateral and unilateral Laplace transforms have all the properties same except two properties. And the two properties are differentiation in time and integration in time. So the property we are having here is for bilateral Laplace transform. This result is for bilateral Laplace transform. And now I will give you the integration in time property for unilateral Laplace transform. When we perform the integration from minus infinity to t of signal f tau d tau, then we have the unilateral Laplace transform equal to fs over s plus integration from minus infinity to zero minus f tau d tau over s. So the result we are having here is for unilateral Laplace transform. And now we will prove the result we have for bilateral Laplace transform. And as I have already told you, the proof is similar to the proof we had in the Fourier transform chapter, but we are proving this property to understand how we have obtained the region of convergence. So the process will remain same. We will take our time domain signal ft and we will convolute it with unit step signal. And we can write this as integration minus infinity to infinity f tau multiplied to ut minus tau d tau. And now we will understand how ut minus tau will affect the integration. For this, we will first plot the waveform of u tau. We have simply replaced t by tau and we have obtained the waveform of u tau, which is unit step signal. And after this, we will perform the time reversal operation and we will have the waveform like this. And then we will perform the time shifting operation 
by t and we don't know whether t is positive or negative so we have simply shifted our waveform towards the left by amount t so in this way we have ut minus tau's waveform from u minus tau and uh, you can clearly see ut minus tau is equal to 1 from minus infinity to t and it is equal to 0 from t to plus infinity so we can break our integration into two different integrals first we have integration from minus infinity to t and we will have the integration of f tau multiplied to ut minus tau but ut minus tau is equal to 1 from minus infinity to t so we have f tau multiplied to 1 d tau plus we have integration from t to plus infinity and you can see ut minus tau is equal to 0 from t to plus infinity so f tau multiplied to 0 will give us 0 so we will get 0 as the result of integration from the second integral and we are left with integration minus infinity to t f tau d tau and on the left hand side we have ft convolution with ut so in this way we have obtained ft convolution with ut equal to integration minus infinity to t f tau d tau and we need to find the laplace transform of integration minus infinity to t f tau d tau and if the result of integration is equal to fs over s with region of convergence at least equal to our intersection real part of s greater than zero we can say that our property is correct and our proof is over so our first task is to obtain the laplace transform of the integral we are having here and it is equal the signal here is equal to ft convolution with ut so if we can obtain the laplace transform of ft convolution with ut we will have the laplace transform of the integral so let's focus on the calculation of laplace transform of ft convolution with ut and we have already seen what will happen to the laplace transform of the two individual time domain signals when we convolute them the corresponding laplace transforms will get multiplied let's say ft is having the laplace transform fs we have already assumed its laplace transform to be fs and uh, we know the laplace transform of ut it is one standard signal its laplace transform is equal to 1 over s so we are getting the laplace transform of ft convolution ut equal to fs over s and the same thing we have written in our result now what about region of convergence if you remember the convolution in time property of laplace transform i told you the region of convergence roc will be at least equal to r1 intersection with r2 where r1 is the region of convergence of fs the laplace transform of the first signal and r2 is the region of convergence of the laplace transform of the unit step signal and we know the region of convergence of the unit step signal is equal to real part of complex variable s greater than zero now we will perform the intersection and in this way we will get roc at least equal to r intersection real part of s greater than zero we are having r here because initially we have assumed region of convergence of fs to be r so in this way we have clearly proved our property and this is all for this lecture see you in the next one